How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood transgender med student, and today we're going to be talking about muscle gain and bone growth while on testosterone. And uh, I wanted to make this video because there's not a lot of evidence-based research articles out there that look at testosterone usage specifically for transmasculine individuals. There's a lot of research on testosterone as a hormone in general and testosterone among bodybuilders and testosterone among cisgender men and even cis women. There's quite a bit of studies on that, but there's not a lot of research on how testosterone affects muscle gain and bone growth on uh, transgender men. So I'm going to be covering a specific study uh, that was published around 2015 and kind of the results that they um, that they had, but also talk about testosterone in general when it comes to muscle growth, muscle growth and bone density, and uh, my personal experience while being on testosterone for over four years. And you know, if you've been following me for a while, I'm an avid gym goer. I exercise a lot. Let's talk about testosterone in general first. Um, multiple studies have shown that testosterone is a hormone, it's, a, it's an anabolic hormone. So anabolic means something that builds up, while there's also catabolic um, hormones that build break down. But, but uh, testosterone in itself is an anabolic hormone, so it helps build things. And when it comes to testosterone in itself, uh, it helps build muscle through uh, other forms of hormones called insulin-like growth factor and a bunch of other stuff, and it stimulates muscle cell turnover. So um, not only will you be building more muscle on testosterone, but um, also it will allow you to create more as you exercise more. I do want to put a caveat that if you just think that testosterone is going to make you super bulky and uh, ripped a bodybuilder, that's not how it is it just makes the propensity for you to build muscle better so when you are on testosterone and you want to get bulky and you want to get lean you still have to exercise and a lot of it's genetics too on how your body tolerates testosterone and how your body synthesizes testosterone so my genes are actually not that good when it comes to muscle buildings like my entire family is full of lanky men um, and they have to work to eat a lot and work out a ton to build uh, that bodybuilder ripped look. So I don't I don't have that bodybuilder ripped look. I am more toned than most people. I lift super heavy weights. But if I saw someone else, if I saw a line of trans mask and cisgender men um, repping the same amount of weights that I do, there's going to be a different variation of how they look. I look kind of on the average to leaner and not as muscly side. So that's a genetic downside for me. But it is what it is. So there will be some people that take testosterone and look super ripped after they're just doing um, <laughs> um, not that much gym time while other people like me who work out a ton still don't see as much results as other people. So how is bone density affected by this increase in, you know, muscle, muscle musculature while somebody takes testosterone? And also, I, I also want to point out this because, um, you know, there's so much discourse on hormones and stuff. Cisgender women also make testosterone, and when they work out more, they also make more testosterone. So we see this um, correlationally with everyone who works out. The more you work out, the more your body will generate testosterone for muscle building. So I just want to put that caveat out there that um, there's no such thing as a person who doesn't have testosterone. Everybody does. So um, when it comes to bone density, and we make that correlation with muscle building and bone densities, the fact that... Uh, your bones have an increased load when you have more muscle. Your bone has to, your bones have to support more weight, and um, the muscles also pull on the bones. So the bones have to be more dense and resistant. So because of that, the more muscle you gain, the more dense your bone. And the really great um, side effect of that is that it protects you from uh, diseases like arthritis and osteoporosis later down in life. Actually, the most evidence-based protection against osteoporosis for everyone, regardless of gender, is weight-bearing exercise. Another misconception that I see a lot is that people uh, attribute testosterone to creating overall whole body increased muscle mass, but the most evidence-based link to muscle building and testosterone is actually upper body mass. So there is going to be some 
a lower body uh, musculature improvement, but most of it is on the upper body. But let's delve into this study that I found that looked at um, a small cohort of transgender men and cisgender women as a control and looked at the difference between them as they took testosterone in their first year. So uh, two big main things that I need to point out before we delve into the results of the study is that one, sample size is small, 25 people, that does not have a lot of statistical power, but it provides an avenue for us to kind of understand on how much of an effect it can have on the greater population of people who take testosterone for hormone replacement therapy. Two is the fact that, uh, wh where was I going with this? <laughs> I totally forgot what my, my second factor was. Now I remember. So the second thing is that they only looked at these individuals in the study for a year. So um, it's not going to take into account those who have been on testosterone for more than a year. Like me, I've been on testosterone for four years and I've actually seen more muscle growth past the one year mark. I've seen more changes overall past the one year mark than I did on my first year. So two big caveats that you need to know before we delve into the study. So after these uh, transmasculine uh, patients were, um, uh, after they've been on testosterone for over a year, the results were pretty, pretty significant. So uh, on this chart, I have uh, highlighted the results that showed the most clinical statistical significance compared to the control, which were cisgender women, not on testosterone. And some of the results are quite fascinating. When you look at total lean body mass in kilograms, we see that these patients gained on average 10.4 kilograms of lean body mass that's amazing that's <laughs> that's more than 10 pounds of um lean body mass gain and then when you look at strength in general we see that the most strength that they've seen an increase in is an 18.2 percent increase in grip strength so uh, the ability to grab onto things super tightly got significantly more improved compared to their baseline before they were on testosterone. That to me is really, really interesting because I saw that the same thing in, within myself. Uh, my grip strength has tripled. Uh, my ring size actually used to be a uh, size four when I, when, before I was on testosterone. And obviously there's more muscles in my hands now. My hands have almost um, increased in size by a third. And now my ring size is a size seven. So it went up three sizes since I've been on testosterone. And um, before I couldn't even hold on to a chin-up bar. I would just fall through because I didn't have the grip strength at all. Now I can hold on to a chin-up bar for more than a minute. So it's insane to me how much testosterone has an impact on the muscles in your hand. Very, very interesting. And then when it comes to the also other muscles they looked at, they saw a 16.6% increase in um, calf forearm uh, muscle circumference and then also uh, not to, uh, not in calf, but in um, in just the forearm. But when it comes to the calf, they saw a 13.6% increase. And all of these results were significant. And then I was really interested in seeing in how much bone mineral density has changed since they've been on testosterone for a year. So I went to that chart and looked at it. And in this chart, you see that uh, when it comes to total body bone mineral density, they didn't really see any significant values of increase. It, it wasn't scientifically or statistically significant compared to the control group, but we do see an increase in bone mineral, mineral density at the hip. Um, the bone mineral density at the hip increased by 1.5, which is interesting to me. And it is um, an area to research more on. I do think the reason why there wasn't as much data on how bone mineral density has changed over time for these is that the timeline was actually pretty short. It was a one year study. And I think for bone remodeling, it takes years. I mean, it takes years for someone to develop osteoporosis. So yeah, I would assume it takes years for someone to build bone. Bone takes a lot more time to remodel because it needs to be broken down and rebuilt compared to muscle, which, you know, tends to develop much, much faster. So I kind of basically mem summarized, mem not memorized, summarized the most <laughs> important data that was released by the study. But I highly encourage if you're interested to check out the full results of the study down below and give a little bit of a um, credit and shout out to the people who did the study. The professors at the University of Ghent in Germany did an amazing work in this study. And 
uh, I would love to see more studies like this in the future and uh, with a larger sample sample size and a more longitudinal look uh, maybe five years 10 years 15 years on testosterone or how that affects uh, muscle mass and bone density and if you're wondering why that is significant and why can't we just look at how testosterone in general affects the average population the thing is is that although that's a good marker to predict what will happen to most bodies that are on testosterone we see time and time again you can't apply the same the same concepts of how hormones affect cis people versus how it affects trans people even when you look at studies when it comes to pcos among cisgender women a lot of old trans research uh, trans medicine assumptions were made um, from those studies that looked at PCOS among cisgender women. And we see time and time again as new studies are being released that you can't relate the two. So I think it's important to continue this sort of work. Anyways, I thought this study was really interesting. I think there is a, a lot to um, learn from from this study. And um, I'm definitely interested because like I've said before, my muscle growth didn't really accelerate until a year after starting hormones. I think I just got the building blocks of muscle growth <laughs> um, during the first year. And I kind of really bulked up within year three and four. So um, I would love to see a longitudinal study that, as a follow-up to this study. Anyways, I hope you learned something. I hope you gained some valuable information from this study. Please share it with someone who may benefit from this information. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life and activism work. And I'm going to conclude this video for today. I love you all. Mwah. This is Ben.